I want to talk about, so my name is Simon, Simon Jean Gottlieb. Uh, I'm a member of the RFC Berlin team. Um, and I want to talk a little about how we or I <laughs> do simulations of our games uh, in WeBots, uh, WebBots actually. Um, and yeah, so here we go. So these are the good old days, right? When we had real robots. Yeah, this is our setup. Yeah, we have a computer here on the right uh, that runs. Whoops. That, uh, how do I do this? I can mark something red. Yes. So I have a computer here on the right. Yeah, that's the uh, game controller. It's running somewhere on a local computer that's connected to some Wi Fi access point. Right, and then uh, the Wi-Fi access point sends out the state of the game controller and the robots. Each robot has its own uh, computing unit and sends back the data. And everyone knows those were the easy days. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think we can still only see the title screen of I have the, the game controller there running on my laptop. There's a Wi-Fi access point running, and then I have robots, and um, I just put them on the field and I can play. And compared to that, I think. I, I, back then, I thought that's complicated, but with Simon, the WebOps sorry, I setup, think um, with it felt Simon? to me slightly more complicated. And I noticed that my team members uh, try to not simulate and try out as many things as they did when we had real robots. Um, so that made me curious or made me want to produce a solution that um, that is easier to use for everyone. Ah, okay. Uh, you still see my starting slide. Thank you. So yes. uh, good that you uh, tell me. I didn't see that. Um, and I don't hear the others. That's true. Yeah, we tried to tell you. Ah, now I can hear you. I'm very sorry about this. Um, no problem. Uh, I'll try to. It's. Uh, how does this work? There we go. Now you see the complete presentation, I guess. Yes. Yes. No, okay. More slides. Awesome. Okay, I'm very, I'm very sorry about this. So I'll, I'll just rewind so you can follow me uh, <laughs> visually. Um, this was the picture that I was talking about. The good old days. <laughs> on the right, you see the game controller. Uh, that's a computer running somewhere on the local network. It's connected to the Wi-Fi access point that I drew here. And then it sends out the signals to our robots, and each of our robot is um, running its own software. Um, yeah, probably all familiar to that. Uh, here you see me. That's the arrow that I drew. And there's where the Wi-Fi access point. And I have six robots here. And those are very old humanoid robots, uh, which spiritually our team <laughs> comes from. And uh, each robot is running, of course, their own software. And this back then, it seemed very hard to set this up, having so many robots, uh, handling so many robots at the same time. But uh, compared to what we have to do now when we want to simulate multiple robots on one computer, that actually feels quite easy these days. So the modern days, yeah, the, the virtual days or the corona days, maybe, if you like so, is um, uh, it's a lot more complicated. So we have the game controller as seen before. Uh, for some cloud reasons, we need a special UDP bouncer. So the robots can't directly talk to the game controller anymore. It all has to go through UDP bouncer for some reasons. Um, There's going to be a talk tomorrow, actually, that will go about this infrastructure a little uh, more in detail uh, uh, from my colleague. Um, but the, the, the main problem is that uh, broadcasting UDP packages doesn't work in the AWS cloud. Um, so we need, we need unidirectional yeah, um, communication. And for that, we have this extra program called the UDP bouncer. Um, then we have an extra program, not yeah, the simulator itself, WebBots, um, which itself is quite complicated because it's not just running WebBots, but it's actually running small little connect to uh, clients where each robot has to connect to you, right? So uh, each robot can take control over. And um, and the last thing that's also new is uh, we have an auto referee, uh, which, which, yeah, referees the game. Um, this one doesn't communicate with the robots at all, but it's uh, manipulating the simulator and it's uh, manipulating the 
game controller and when you have all this open and you change something in the game controller then the auto referee crashes or if you close webots then the udp bouncer doesn't close so so opening everything then having some error and then restarting everything is quite hard and the other problem which is not so much of this talk is uh, running multiple instances of your robot on one machine um, this is in our case actually doable because our software stack is quite small and we are not using any GPU acceleration, so they're not fighting over any uh, special hardware. Um, but since they're using the same ports, talking to the game controller or now to the UDP bouncer, um, it's actually not possible to start them uh, simultaneously without any special uh, wrapper around. So, Frustration, right? You open, you close, the UDP bouncer doesn't close, the, 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 the not the Rust, the, the WebBots clients uh, crashes, you have some of your own instances of software running somewhere and forgot to close them because you didn't find the windows anymore with all the windows terminal terminals open. So, and I said <laughs> very, very often they're just like that. And um, on top, I have to say, um, I'm also an Arch Linux user. I just have to say that because I'm an Arch Linux user, but also because WebBots is not uh, designed for uh, Arch Linux. They have not uh, official support and compiling sometimes is, <laughs> takes a few extra steps. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's very often I sat there like this. So my idea was I need to reduce the complexity and the solution for this these days is always Docker. <laughs> Yes, uh, because Docker is the solution for everything, for our problems. So the idea was, let's put the UDP bouncer, the auto referee, WeBots, and the game controller all into one Docker container. Yeah, let's start that all at once, make it seem like one program. Um, so it's like, it feels like back then when we only had the game controller, now we have the game controller plus the all the extras. Um, so I did create a new Docker image, um, which is also available. You can you can find it under this uh, GitHub link. Um, it's also uploaded on the Docker IO, so you don't have to build it yourself or anything. You can just run, and I will show a few commands in a second. You can just run the commands and um, try out try out this image. Um, this is also what the talk is about, right? So I'm not really wanting you to you can but it's not what's yeah, all about to encourage just playing against us. I'm also hoping that you might use it for your own testing on your own computers. And maybe I get some feedback on how to improve it or maybe you just send in some improvements. So um, the Docker image itself is also Arch Linux based. Um, this comes from, because I created back then sometime a Docker image that, uh, which I was just using to figure out what's going wrong uh, when, when compiling um, WebBots. Uh, it seems that it's much more stable uh, today than it was half a year ago. Um, another thing that I really wanted is to have the game controller headless. I didn't want to see any of the visuals, uh, which, um, because manipulating the game controller while the auto referee runs is uh, always a bad idea. Um, that confuses the auto referee and uh, just brings a lot of wrong decisions. And the third thing that was really important to me was a pre-configured WebBots instance. So I know that when you start WebBots that you get like First time you start, you get like two or three toolboxes. You have to close a lot of windows that you don't need. There's a console that doesn't print anything and so on. So you have all this visual cl uh, cluster that um, just makes the usage not as smooth as maybe it could be. Um, I think that the default setup makes sense for the WebBots default um, setup. Um, so I don't think that the error directly lies with WebBots itself, but I think for our specific circumstances, it does make sense to um, have something slightly more configured for our use cases. Um, since the setup itself, again, of WebBots and configuring all the teams and so on is um, also not straightforward, um, the whole thing is being split into two phases. 
Um, there's the initialization phase uh, where you call this Docker image once and it will create a directory for you with uh, some pre-configured stuff. And then you go into that folder and change a few things and a run phase. Um, so the init phase you only kind of do once and maybe do slight modification. And then the run phase, which will just restart the WebBots instant over and over and over. In the run phase, of course, you run the WebBots Docker image, and then you can run your software locally on your computer, or you can also run it in a second, second Docker container. But I'm going to tell you slightly more about this right now. So the init phase, so all this, by the way, uh, I forgot to say this at the beginning. I have a blog, blog article uh, on our website where you can refollow all these steps. Um, so if you actually want to try this out, uh, it should completely work on a, on, a, on a Linux machine without any issues. If there are issues, then something is wrong, then please do a bug report. So the initialization phase um, is, um, yeah, you write a, you, you create a new config folder. This is this uh, make config, obviously, just create a new config folder, and then you run the Docker image. Yeah, and you run it with that's the image, the name of our image, our Webot. Um, and the program running inside is a small script. It's called Webot Run, and we call it with the inner parameter. And what this does is it will it will populate the config folder with um, with um, preset configuration files. Um, if you want, of course, to call your folder something else than config, you can change the config name here, and you have to change it right here. Yeah, uh, very important inside of the Docker container, you should not change it. Um, yeah. Um, the next step you have to follow is you go into the config folder. And in the case of if you want to play against the RFC Berlin, um, you have to um, add the robot models. So in our case, you can just clone our robots model from GitHub. Um, this is the SSH version of clone. Maybe you want to use the HTTPS version of clone, but uh, both are the same. So you clone our robot model. And what's special about our robot model, it already has also included uh, the team JSON file, which describes where our robots should be spawned on the field, on which height, and how far they should be from the field away, so they're not actually inside the field while spawning. And um, if you want to do it for your own team, of course, you also have to, besides the robot model, you also have to include a team JSON file. Um, the next step you have to do is you have to go into the game JSON uh, uh, file that was created during the init phase, and there you will find um, you will find two entries for the red and blue tree team, which uh, you have to adjust. So um, it will actually point to your team team JSON file. Um, yeah, this is uh, slightly spread out. So you open the game JSON file and then you will find some entry where you have to put in your team ID. That's really important. So the game controller actually is using the team ID of your team. Uh, the zero first RFC Berlin is alphabetically the first, <laughs> the zero first uh, team in the list. So we're at team, team ID one. And um, Yes, and in this case, if you follow the tutorial, you will uh, point your team config, your team JSON uh, to Webot's robot models. Um, Webot's robot models is the name of our repository. So if you're a different team, of course, it will be your team slash the team JSON or some, something else. Um, but it's important that it lies inside of this config folder. It cannot lie outside because otherwise it will later not be available for the, for the run phase, uh, for the run phase. Yeah, so after doing all this, you actually already set up, you set up all your, your instances and you're, you're ready to run the simulator. Um, the running the simulator uh, needs a few more parameters to allow direct access to your graphic cards, to allow uh, access to your X server. Um, I tried this as well under X Wayland as well as X11, um, both worked. Um, there are a few parameters you have to you have to put in. You have to forward the display variable that's being set here. You have to forward the the, the X11 file path, or can actually communicate with the X11 server. Uh, you need to give the and that's always yeah a problematic call. Maybe you have to call the privileged um, 
the privilege mode, so it can have access to certain hardware. Uh, we forward our config folder again, and then we run it with Vbot run again, but instead of in it, we run it with game. Um, the whole thing, just so you know, uh, it's not a running root inside, it's actually having a dedicated user. So that's, I hope, that it prevents the, the worst, worst of uh, vulnerabilities. But um, yeah, that's always something you have to have in mind, of course, when using Docker. Yes, and after running this, uh, you're set up, you should have a, you have a view of a webbot. Um, in that case, as the next step, you would call your own your own program. In this case, you can also call the, the Docker image from our team that's also available online. So just calling this line of code should start our robot on your machine. Um, there's a slight neat trick uh, involved here. Um, if, you, if you run our software, obviously our software has to know where's all the other where, where's the game controller, where's the WebBots instance and so on. And they're all running under their own IP address inside the other Docker container. And the other Docker containers actually, every time it runs, it actually checks what IP address it has and saves it through this config slash some IP. Um, so this line of code should run out of the box. You do not have to adjust any IPs. If you do something fancy, of course, in your Docker environment with your IPs and networking and so on, you maybe want to put something manually in here. Um, here on the right is the, the port that has to be changed. If you want to have a second and a third and a fourth robot, that would be a two, three, four. Or if you are team, the other team, it would be 21, 22, 23. Um, same for the robot ID. And then there's a special command that's just for our robots relevant so they don't uh, record uh, data and don't uh, fill up your <laughs> disk space. Right, and then you just call our software and that's fine. And when doing that, you should have something similar to this. So at the beginning, you should see four robots being spawned on the side and you should see how they walk uh, into the field. Uh, I don't know exactly what robot walks were, um, that one in this simulation walked there, walked too far, too far into the goal, and then got picked out from the auto referee again. Um, yes, simulating three or four robots is really small. You can see I have a real time factor of 0 0.12, um, which is actually unexpectedly high. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the, yeah, the real time factor is low, so low, so you probably want to spawn less robots. Yeah, right. So if you wanna play against us, you follow this tutorial, you follow these lines and you will have our team right there. And everything you have to do now is you have to add your robot models to the, to the config folder. You have to adjust the game JSON. So it points to your team JSON and then you have to run your software uh, and just make sure that the IP address of the game controller and UDP bouncer now the UDP bouncer and the WebBots uh, instance is pointing to the right IP address and you should be ready and be able to play. Um, yeah, I'm of course not actually hoping that you all train against our robots. So we are getting, we gonna be defeated by everyone, but we actually hope that you're gonna use it <laughs> for your own, <laughs> for your own, for your own robots, um, yeah. There are more options that I've put in. They are not all um, perfect yet. So we went over the init, init command and we went over the game command. Um, there's also a dash dash show game controller command, which will actually display the game controller if you actually want to see it. Otherwise, it's being hidden away. Um, I'm also thinking about putting in something like dash dash no webots. So that's also invisible. So you can actually run it completely headless, but I haven't put it in yet. Um, I have to move around this, yes. Um, there's also the model checker, uh, which is being used for um, before the tournament. So other teams can check of other teams if their, if their models are correct. I still put in a command to do that. Um, then you just type in dash dash model checker, and then you have to put in the, the path of the protobuf, no, not protobuf, what it's called, the, the the proto, it's, it's, a, it's a WebBot special definition of your robot, the path. This is 
slightly annoying to be honest because this path is also always relative to your config folder and not to your actual system where you call that so there are few few small things that are not perfect yet <clears throat> right so things that i thought about what I could or we could do with this is we could uh, simplify the configuration slightly further. We could actually preclude some robot models of some teams if they like and want to contribute. So you actually do not have to uh, download them. Um, and what I would like to do is three things, even though I only wrote down two things, I want to do three things. I want to do, uh, I want to have predefined scenarios. I want to have predefined scenarios to, to test my robots under penalty uh, conditions. Um, I want them to, um, I want to try out indirect and direct free kicks um, as well for when we get it and when the other get it. It's really, really hard currently to start webbots and get into a situation where you can specifically test for the scenario. Um, and that's, yeah, and to, 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 to improve that, um, I would like to have scenarios to, to directly start that. And then it should only run, that's the idea, run for 20 to 30 seconds. And latest then it should be in the scenario of getting this free kick. Um, I do not exactly know how to get there yet, but <laughs> that's something uh, that I would like to have. And the third thing that we use it a lot for is actually calibrating the ball or calibrating the vision in general. Um, but if the web bots and the auto referee is uh, running at the same time, then I cannot move the ball around or it says it's throw in suddenly just because I moved it too far to the side or my robot gets penalized because it did something that it shouldn't do, but I placed it there so, <laughs> so I can try out certain things. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe some some mode where it can start the whole whole software stack, but the auto referee doesn't enforce any rules maybe or um, something like that. Um, the issue currently is the auto referee is responsible for um, spawning the robots. So it's very hard to deactivate the auto referee because then I manually have to spawn the robots. It's also not what I want to do. Yeah. And a uh, third thing that I want is uh, there are a few limitations that sometimes gets into the way. Uh, we, we always have to use uh, robot ID one and then two. So we cannot just spawn robot two and three. We always have to start with the ID one. Um, that's a huge limitation for us because the robot ID ones is for uh, and our team always reserved for the goalie. And uh, so that's the most uninteresting robot that we <laughs> that we spawn, and then we are always forced to spawn at least two robots. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the link for the the block article. Thank you very much for listening. Questions, suggestions. Oh, uh, thank you for the for the talk. Um, I actually I I started with a comment. <laughs> So the, the spawning part uh, is relatively independent from the rule checking part and the auto referee. So I think it should be sufficient to just like disable the main loop and then no rules are going to be enforced. And instead of doing the checking, just do a step, a simulation step. Yeah. Uh, so I think this would be relatively simple. Yeah. But I also have a okay. question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, is it is it a big change in performance compared to running robots natively, like without a Docker wrapper? I I have not noticed. Um, so there are a few tricks that I also mentioned actually on the GitHub page. I think is um, you might want to run it with in front of webots. How does this work? You might want to run it um, instead of running it like this. You might want to put in here like. Uh, um, Prime run if you have a, like an NVIDIA card or something, because then it will actually use the. So if you have a dedicated card and a integrated graphic cards, then you might be have to do some extra steps so it uses the correct graphic cards. And I'm using a laptop, so that's quite important. But no, I have not. Uh, I have not experienced any um, performance differences. Um, and I would be surprised actually if there are any relevance relevant performance differences. Um, the only thing where I see where it could be slowed down is in the communication of these um, sockets, maybe, because then they're more isolated, but I don't know about that. Um, 
yeah so so it's nothing nothing where i would say like nothing that i not, nothing that i noticed i'm not saying it's not there <laughs> but nothing that i noticed that's uh, relevant um <clears throat> the the speed up of restarting your simulation in in five seconds is so much more valuable <laughs> uh that um yeah even if it's i don't know 10 percent slower it didn't matter in my cases at least do we have any other questions There's, I also, just a side note, there's also an experimental thing that I tried. I tried to run it under Windows with, uh, with uh, WSL. Uh, I was able to run it actually under Windows 10. Uh, the big issue with Windows 10, I did notice a performance issue. Uh, I would not get more than two frames <laughs> per second. Uh, that's because it cannot access the uh, graphic cards. It cannot do any acceleration at all. Uh, but I heard that uh, this limitation of WSL2 is lifted with uh, Windows 11, but I haven't tried it out yet. Um, <clears throat> not that it's, I hope it's not relevant for most of you, but <laughs> still, interesting side note. <clears throat> I do actually have another question. So uh, how well does it work if you want to run multiple of these uh, Revolts instances on the same machine? So, so I have not tried it out. Uh, I would assume that it works, but we already know that WebBots has really bad performance. So running two, of course, will be twice as bad. I'm assuming. Maybe um, not. So, so in my experience, the problem is the single core performance with WebBots. Uh, so if you have multiple cores and the other instance runs on a different core, um so it's like the parallelization of the mm -hmm. uh physics is basically not non-existent i so i have not tried it out and i cannot i can actually just not answer this question i just don't know i don't know it's the correct answer <laughs> um, i don't see why not but that doesn't mean anything um yeah Yeah, one more thing, uh, you have to be careful, downloading the WebBots uh, container or image actually is 4.5 gigabytes large, so it's quite quite big, um, but that's roughly the same size as the um, WebBots uh, GitHub repository, so that doesn't uh, take or give a lot. And one thing that's very neat about actually simulating against our software is um, that it's, it's less than 200 megabytes for the for the image. So it's, it's a small, small image, uh, easy, easy to use. But again, do not train all the time against us. Yes, give us a chance. 